Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode of Viva Spanish, the podcast, where I have two very exciting guests, where I have Gordon and Cynthia. These guys yeah. are light speed Spanish. And now I know that you guys are very popular in the Spanish language learning world because my students tell me all about you all the time. Oh, so, that's nice. <laughs> excellent. So considering that, can you explain, please, how light speed Spanish came to be and, and what it is all about? Hmm, good question. Okay, well, Lightspeed Spanish came about after we made uh, two kind of goes at it and it didn't work out. So we we've uh, the first thing that we tried to do a lot of years ago now, maybe 18 years ago, 17 years ago, we decided to, to set up a business called Moving to Spain. Well, and, before that, we had En Casa Spanish. Uh, we, 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 used to we did En Casa about, first. Or was en it, Casa yeah. Spanish first, yeah. and then... We did move into Spain, which didn't work out. <laughs> and then, out. but but we'd learned a lot. And then we thought, hang on a minute. Well, let's let's just you know start with the basics and help people from beginner all the way through. So then we came up with, we were obviously with the name like Lightspeed Spanish. We we're thinking, how could we have Spanish and fast Lightspeed Spanish? So that was the idea. We we started Lightspeed Spanish um, with the cheapest video camera you could imagine with no editing software no idea what we were doing well the, we, the cheapest video camera because we stole it from <laughs> our colleague we borrowed we, it we borrowed it we borrowed it i, I didn't oh, we still it. haven't returned it. i had permission <laughs> i had permission to take it but then i forgot to take it back yeah, we'll but by on. the time we'd finished using it it was so outdated anyway i mean it was neither here nor there but we would do videos and i would um i would press the button with my finger so you would see me the, the start of the video was me doing this and then you would see me stopping it okay. uh and that's how we, we we just did these 10 minute videos and uh I, you know and they took off Every, everyone seemed to like them you know because it, they were just nice and short and snappy and with good good content mm. you seem to be ahead of the curve as well if you were doing that all that time ago before online learning became a real thing you were you were well ahead of the game there yeah, I think there were a couple of uh, people that I know of notes, doing it. Notes, notes in, Spanish. in Spanish. We're doing yeah. it before, and so we learned a lot from them as well we, in the style and yeah. But we wanted to do it our way as well. Um, yeah. So that's how we we thought we could do that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why don't we do that? And and I said to Gordon, why do we do it on YouTube? Because before we used to just record it. Um, where did as we a, used to pu uh, publish uh, it? On on uh, ooh, on the website. Yeah, we didn't have website. any videos. And then yeah. I said to Gordon, why don't we just do videos, you know? And that's how we started to do Life Speed Spanish. Sure. Oh. Amazing. But that Amazing. theme that theme of, of um, uh, one partner Spanish, one partner English, it's a great, it's a great balance. And mm -hmm. now there are tons of couples yeah. who, who are doing that as well, you know? So it's, it, is a good, it is a good kind of structure to have yeah. for, for teaching. That's true. That's really cool. So... Um, those that haven't followed you don't know who you are at this point in time. Where can people find you? Because like I've said, a lot of my students know of you and listen to your podcast regularly and watch your videos. But for those that don't, where can they find out what you're doing? Okay, so we are on. So all, all that they need to search for is Lightspeed Spanish. Um, we have a website, which is lightspeedspanish.co.uk. And then we're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, uh and uh, the platform the all the socials. platforms yeah yeah and then obviously on our website our website if you can find lots of material everywhere but the website has everything yes you know it has everything and loads of free content so yeah. that's where i would recommend people to go we also have Very books nice. on amazon for sale as well because we do grammar books <laughs> yeah so we fun have a, grammar book. A fun yeah. grammar. I don't know if that goes together though. Fun yeah. grammar. Ox oxymoron, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because, you know, diving straight in, the, the reason I reached out to you guys, and thank you so much for accepting my invitation, by the way, was because oh, my students have told me that the way that you guys present Spanish is very similar to the way that I present Spanish. And that's not getting hung up on the grammar. Mm -hmm. It's necessary because it's necessary but you you make it fun you try and limit it as much as possible to the bare minimum and then you have fun with the language sure, and, yeah. and and that's that's you know what my students have told me sure. so your backgrounds in languages what are they please well i 
I studied English for many years before moving to England. I started when I was nine and I was so terrible at it that my mom had to uh, put me in an academy after school academy, as we call it, uh, to learn English because I was failing miserably. And then I started to get better at it after years. And then I thought, I actually, I think I like it, you know. <laughs> and then I wanted to go to England and I was studying at uni. And I was also planning to take a year off to go to England. It was going to be London or around that area um, to work in a restaurant or to work for a hotel you know, and they give you accommodation as well. So I was planning to do that. And I nearly, you know, I was filling out the papers and everything to do that. But then I, I met Gordon and he said, well, he didn't say come over. I actually said, I'm going over to you. How do you mean that, no? <laughs> yeah, I self-invited. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I was in England. I was, I was so happy to be there because I had planned to be in England for so long. And I thought, what a better way, you know, to be there with a friend because he was my friend yes. at the time. Sure, that's and really it was cool. Fantastic. Mm. So you're from Madrid. You're Madrileña yes. originally, Cynthia, right? Yes. So what what part of Madrid did you grow up in? I'm from Torrejón, Torrejón de Ardoz. Uh -huh. So that's, that's my area. Very cool. Very cool. And which language academy did you study at when you were doing your English over there? What's that language academy? Mm. In in Such curiosity, yeah, uh, it was called Ebenen. Still okay. there, yes, still there it's, now, it's, right? it's actually where we do our immersion courses now. Wow, so you've gone full circle, full yes, circle. Because I, you know, I I got to know all the teachers there, and because you know, all I of talked them were to them, trying to yeah. help you, <laughs> <laughs> and I said to them, actually, you know, could I, could we come here to teach Spanish? And they said, yes, absolutely. So now we teach Spanish in the academy where I used to learn English. So that's that is really cool. cool. That's such a cool story. Really cool. Um, so when you went over to the UK, Cynthia, did you immediately go to the Northeast? I know Gordon's yes. from, from that way on. Yes. Um, very good. Uh, it's funny because a couple of my students have mentioned having recognized the Northeastern twang in your English accent. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit. The, the northern vowels are are easy to spot, and they're, yeah. they're not easy to get rid of either. I mean, I, I I suppose I have more or less, I suppose your accent, but Gordon doesn't have strong northern accent compared to the people in the northeast. Sure, um, yeah. it dilutes yeah. over time, doesn't it? Well, I, it, I like it, it though. It has to. When I went to work, I went to work a, a, abroad, and uh, when you're working with people whose English is their second language, you you can't have. A jolly accent because they wouldn't yeah. know what the heck you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I love the accent now, though. At the beginning, That's it was it. a bit of a shock. Yeah. After learning, well, I was going to say proper English, not proper English. Sorry, hon. Like, <laughs> okay, you... it's not Queen's English, but like standard, not right. received pronunciation English, very formal English, sure. and how do you do things like that? That's and then it. you go to the northeast, and you you think. <laughs> That's it. That's, that's, not, that's not in my book. <laughs> what does what does Yarit mean? <laughs> exactly. So funny story about Geordie in my life was the first day at university, I sat next to a guy and he was from Newcastle. And we, we decided, as you do on the first day, let's go out and drink on uh, to get to know each other. And about half past 11, he turned to me and he said to me, I'm Ganyem. <laughs> and, yeah. and I said to him, you're what? <laughs> I'm Ganyem. And I said, I don't know what that means. <laughs> did his slurred best British English accent. He said, I'm going home. <laughs> and I was like, oh my word, Gan Yem. So I learned something myself in English on my first day of university. So how about you then, Gordon? Because obviously you're the person that's gone through the Spanish journey, which is what obviously the listeners are more um, possibly, no offense, Cynthia, interested in. Yes, I understand. <laughs> Cynthia went through the Spanish journey when she was very little from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I I started uh, quite late on. So I, I what happened? I was working in in Morocco in textiles and doing very badly with my French, very badly. And my my boss said, "Would you like to go to Mexico?" And I said, "Yeah, hey, I'd love to." He said, "You're probably going to have to learn a bit of Spanish." And and his idea, a bit of Spanish, would be see si, no, 
and Gracias, yeah? Okay. So I started to, to, six months before I went there, I started to learn. And it was, it, when as soon as I started to, to learn it, I just thought, wow, I really like this language. This is a beautiful language. It, it, you know, I, I'd, I'd learned French at school. I was speaking French really badly in Morocco, but it just didn't, just didn't resonate with me. And then I started with Spanish and it was like, wow, this is something that I want to learn. So then I had two years of, of brutal immersion in Mexico, working in a factory in a very small village where nobody spoke English. And so it, it was kind of, and I'm just writing about this and I'm, I'm writing a, a book about the Mexican experience. And what I realized is that for whatever reason, I didn't get a teacher. I didn't think I probably could do with a teacher. <laughs> so I just, I was just learning what I heard, learning stuff had a massive confusion but by the end of two years I, I would what I, I was what you described fluently crap I could speak fluent <laughs> Spanish but really badly and then I came back to the UK uh, and I started to study it I did um, my GCSE then I did my two years of A level and then Cynthia and I met and then I continued and I did uh, my university degree in in languages Spanish being the predominant one so that was kind of the journey of the, the the formal journey. But of course, then Cynthia and I, we started teaching Spanish on a um, private basis, you know, one-to-one uh, -one classes. Uh, we start to do um, after-school clubs and things like that. So what I found, and you probably found this as well, Lee, the process of, if you want to learn Spanish, teach it. This is what I often say to people. If you want to learn Spanish, teach it, because as long as you're one step ahead... <laughs> of the students <laughs> just one <laughs> just one just one class ahead that's all you have to be and so what through the process of teaching spanish uh and and with with cynthia's help i've been able to kind of understand the best way of explaining spanish mm -hmm. in my in my opinion the best way yes. of explaining rather than just you know a cold dry book saying this is what you have yeah. to say you yeah. know once you've been through the journey like yourself you understand what the process is and it's much easier to explain it. Yes. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely, it's funny you mentioned about being one class ahead because I have a group of, uh, of gentlemen on a Monday evening that are a very similar profile to me. They like to have a laugh and a joke. And I tell them when they ask me a question, well, I don't know, I'm only one class ahead of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously I then save it with the answer of that's my <laughs> disclaimer, but I always joke with them. I'm only one step ahead of you. <laughs> sure. um, I, I found, and I don't know if you guys would agree that, Spanglish and the mistakes that Spaniards make in English were a big help to me learning Spanish too. Sure. So when you hear that um, for to go is a, is a typical one, I should to see, you know, you have all of these things. <laughs> and therefore when I teach the Spanish, I say, when you hear Spaniards speaking in English, they'll say this because, and it's because of this is, this is the structure in Spanish. And, with a lot of them, it just gives them something to hang their hat on and go, oh, okay, that was the time when Lee explained. So that's what we must need next. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. So what other languages do you have then, Gordon, in particular? You mentioned uh, you, a predominant Spanish. You mentioned bad French. Was that your other yeah, language? I've yeah. still got it. And you, when I started to learn Spanish, the French that I had just went, woo, no vamos. And uh, <laughs> it went from my head. It's still there, and I think I could, you know, muster it up. But very, I mean, very present tense French, etc. Uh, I've been learning. Was both of us have been learning um, just for a challenge, es um, Esperanto for a year. We're oh, wow. busy learning that, and I've just started. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, like four years behind Cynthia with uh, Portuguese. So, wow, wow, that's I'm cool. On and off Portuguese, <laughs> Portuguese, and, and yeah. es Esperanto. Just so that we thought, hey. If we learn Esperanto, when when we go somewhere, we could use it and nobody would know what we were saying. That's yeah. true. We started it because somebody said to us, oh, Esperanto is only 20 lessons on Duolingo. We're like, 20 lessons? Well, let's learn that language. It wasn't 20 <laughs> it lessons. It wasn't 20 lessons. <laughs> it wasn't 20 lessons. It was 20 <laughs> blocks of lessons <laughs> with about 100 lessons in each. So anyway, we yeah, we we, we were fooled into it. But it's it's fun. It's interesting. It's, it's just, fun. It's just a, a way of keeping you... It's like a mix a, a mix of languages. Yeah. So if you speak yeah. English and Spanish, you know, you can work out why 
things are like that in, in Esperanto. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really cool. You know what? Um, I've just got back from Croatia. Uh-huh. And the, the taxi driver was intent on talking to me. I must have one of those faces. Taxi drivers just love to talk at me. And they know that I don't understand. <laughs> but it was really interesting because I could pick up enough words within each phrase just about to understand what he was getting at. Mm, and it good. helped that he was talking about sports things. And he threw in athletes' names. You know, Modric. I got that one. <laughs> and Kovacic. And he mentioned uh, Djokovic and all of these... And and it was catastrophe. That was one that he kept uh, mentioning. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Mafia and politica. Do you know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. between the languages that I do know, which I'm limited to my English and my Spanish, I could mm-hmm. still piece together enough based on, on yeah. the information that he was providing me with. Yeah. But that's amazing. Did you ever think about Klingon, perhaps, as a as a language to learn? Klingon, no. I, I, I'm I'm avoiding all of those kind of languages. <laughs> yeah, just just because of the limited ability to speak them you know you mean it's not on duolingo <laughs> no i haven't, I haven't seen thing on duolingo we haven't said that we speak i speak geordie ah yeah i speak geordie as well yeah geordie trilingual, multi- <laughs> multilingual, multilingual. yeah uh, yeah so interestingly gordon what yeah. are your thoughts on the crossover between the mexican spanish that you picked picked up mm. obviously in mexico and then what you've learned with a native spanish speaker hmm yeah, it was a um, it was an interesting time when I came back from Mexico. Clearly, I had a Mexican accent. Yeah, because we, we laugh about it. Because I, I, when Cynthia and I met, I had a Mexican accent, and she had an American accent. So but between the two of us, it was <laughs> like, right, hang on a minute, something's going wrong here. So um, what I was aware of was that lots of things that I'd learned in Mexico just weren't working when I was talking to Cynthia, she, you know, um, she would say, "Mm, we don't say that. Mm. Yeah. And things like the subjunctive as well. Not with that face. No, I wouldn't pull that face. No? (laughs) Like, "Mm." All right. right. We don't say that, she would say, (laughs) with a big smile. Um, But uh, so with subjunctive as well, you know, the subjunctive is used slightly differently in Mexico to to how it is in in uh, Spain. Yeah. So what I what I realized, and we we were teaching people uh, who were prim- primarily going to Spain to learn to to speak Spanish. So I was thinking, I'm really not doing any doing any favors by teaching them with a Mexican accent, not not saying cerveza instead of cerveza. So uh, I realized I had to do something. So I, I spent it took me three months to change my accent. Okay. And uh, I had to do it by reading out loud every day for three months and kind of doing a creating a loop of that's not what I'm hearing Cynthia say. So I'll say it again. And little by little, I, I got there and I changed it. I mean, obviously, again, it's a work in progress. But um, yeah, the, how would I say that the Mexican Spanish and, and Spanish from Spain, the structure is identical. You know, like ninety-eight percent of the Spanish is the same. Yeah. But there are some things that are different. And certainly the expressions here in Spain are very different. Certainly the use of um palabrotas here in Spain right. is much more liberal and more relaxed and groovy than it is in and they've got in Mexico they've got their own swear words yeah. very much, you know, very different. I mean, they do swear a lot. But Spanish swear words for them are very, they sound very brutal for them. All right. Yeah. Okay. I get they're that. Very, yeah. they're, they're, they're a bit too harsh for them. Where's their more? <laughs> they'll put ito on the end and then, and then it's, yeah. they sound a lot better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cute, cuter swear words. Cuter, yeah. They use uh, vosotros as well. Of course. You yeah. Have to learn, yeah. You have to, vosotros because you haven't learned it in, in Mexico. Oh, so right. that was a, another, another conjugation I had to learn. Sure. So at the beginning, it was it was hard sure. as for him. I remember that. that... Me... Sorry, Sorry, go on. Go ahead. I, well, I was just going to interject for a second and say that brings me on to a really, really interesting question of what are your thoughts on suggesting promoting Duolingo being Spain-based, as obviously I'm European-based and as was your case, my students go to Spain predominantly over Mexico and Latin America. What are your thoughts on promoting Duolingo, Duolingo as a tool for improving Spanish? 
when there are some discrepancies in the languages? Mm. I think Duolingo is a fantastic tool to learn. And I wouldn't say no to Duolingo if they want to learn Spanish from Spain, even if it's mostly from Mexico, even though it says um, Latin American, it's mostly Mexican, because most of it is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, it is true that I would also recommend to have a teacher from the country you want to learn from. Yeah. And you could use Duolingo as a means to uh, add vocabulary, structure, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then have a teacher for questions because, you know, sometimes if anybody who's done Duolingo, sometimes you think, why can I not say this? Or why is that wrong? Yeah. And it doesn't say why. So, you know, it leaves you sometimes with more questions. Yeah. So I think it's good to have that, you know, as your pastime. I'll learn some vocabulary, some structure, whatever, and then have a teacher. Yeah. In, I, in isolation, to... definitely not. No, not in isolation. One, one of the things, and it, we'll probably come to it uh, about what's important. Mm -hmm. What I what I see when we're learning Spanish is this, and we're learning anything, learn anything. When you've installed the habit, it's a hard job getting it installed. But once it's installed, it's it's a thousand times harder to get it out to to change it. And one of the biggest issues that we we've noticed with students who have who've gone down the road of learning uh, cerveza, okay, instead of cerveza. They've come so far down the road that it's sometimes very hard for them to get mm. back, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And so, as Cynthia says, du Duolingo, Duolingo, that's how we've got to say it in English, isn't it? Du oh, I Duolingo. Duolingo. I say Duolingo all the time. Duolingo. Duolingo. Is, is du Duolingo. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's brilliant, but in isolation, it will cause you long term problems. Mm, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, you'll get a terminal accent. <laughs> yeah. And I, questions. I completely agree. That's my thought exactly. My, I, I never tell a student, don't use Duolingo. Some people have given up on it off their own backs. They've said, I, it's just confusing me more than I'm learning. And I, Well, in that case, you've made the decision. Some mm -hmm. people say, what do you think? And I exactly what you just said, Cynthia, that it's got its place. Yes. But mm -hmm. just with a pinch of salt, just yes. understand that there are going to be some nuances. You're going to learn some words that will get you a really confused look back from a Spaniard. Um, mm. However, it's it's a really useful tool to have. Um, what's your thoughts on the teaching of Usted? Well, mm. Usted... We've been talking a lot about Yeah, we've been talking yeah. about this a lot. Um, usted and Ustedes is obviously used in Spain. Um, however, lately it's not used as much. Before it was used a lot more. Uh, any formal situations, you would use usted or ustedes for plural. Um, with elderly people, you would use usted, ustedes. Um, anything that would look or sound formal, that would be the go-to person to use. Nowadays, though, it's so everything is so relaxed that even in, let's say, more formal situations, if you go to the bank or if you're talking to, I don't know, your phone company or whatever, before you would use usted, and they would use usted with you. Now they don't. Or sometimes they start with usted, and then they switch to tú. Tutea, <laughs> tutea. Yeah. No, but they, without you saying tutea me, yeah. <laughs> they just they switch. <laughs> because it feels more comfortable. It feels more familiar. It feels more... Um, it doesn't feel as detached. You know, when you right. use usted and ustedes, it's formal, but it's also detached. You know, you're detached from the other person. It's like... Yeah. There's no relationship here. It's just a... Uh, you're not my friend. You're we're not doing, a friend. We're doing business. This yeah. is a business. Yeah, there's an exchange here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think now is... I think it's just mostly used now for elderly people as a sign of respect, you know. And I, I don't know that it's used that much in other situations. Mm. Unless it's a really formal situation. But apart from that, elderly people will be the, the place to use it. But in terms of teaching it, sorry, uh, uh, Lee, in terms of teaching it, it's, you know, my mistake was my, my production manager said, oh, in Mexico, we don't use vosotros, you don't need to learn it. And I went, yeah. fantastic. I'll just not learn it then. <laughs> and then two years later, three years later, I met Cynthia and I had to relearn it. And I was already down the road. It's the same with usted and ustedes. Just because it's not used so much in Spain, it's still a vital part. Oh, yeah, you should uh, you learn know, it, definitely. You've got to learn it and you've yeah. got to know how to 
to to use it and and also to understand when somebody's using it with you because if somebody's talking to you as usted you should be replying in usted as well you know if they've set the, set the platform of i'm going to talk to you in usted um so it's very important to learn it however for me personally when i have to talk using usted i slow down because i haven't got the, the practice, practice yeah because you know, even if you start and they say, okay, no, me, no, me hables de usted. No soy tan mayor. No, I'm not that old. So it's kind of like most, you know, 99.9% .9 of my time I spend using tú and vosotros. So, yeah, I haven't got the practice. And 99% yeah. of the time that I've talked to somebody using usted, within a sentence, they've said to me, tú te ame. Yeah. Always. Well, 99% of the time. Sure. So, yeah. sure. It's just That's not that you now. Mm -hmm. Because I'll, I'll be very honest, this is where we slight misalignment because I do tell my students, particularly in the, uh, your students maybe are slightly different because they're living in Spain. I imagine some, at least obviously the, the ones that you'll have face to face on a regular basis. Um, I say to mine, don't waste your energy on it. I said, we've got limited brain capacity <laughs> to, to, to spend eight percent or however many percent it turns out to be of learning that usted goes in the third person singular and usted i said just don't worry about it i said i i used it 10 times in eight years yeah. speaking to old people if they wanted my seat on the bus or the metro yeah so that so that, that, you know but it's good it's good that we have these conversations and sure, it's yeah. a really good investment of people's time to decide for themselves if they think Do you know what I think Gordon's right. If somebody speaks to me in Spanish and they use usted, I really ought to know what they're talking to me about. And so, it's, yeah, it's valuable, really valuable. Yeah. I think just to add to that, Lee, um, there's a, there's certain things that we, we for example, I'll give you an example. When when you're using the, the, the sentence, for example, um, le di a Maria la cosa. Okay? <laughs> la cosa. La cosa. <laughs> Okay, what, so what I give Maria the thing. I give Maria what, the that thing. Is, you know. The thing, yeah. Okay. Just imagine what it was. So, <laughs> so the shortened version of that is, se la di. Okay, and what I say to the students is that's you know it's supposed to shorten the sentence down, but it, it's that's a very complex thing that mm. you don't need to use, but you need to understand it. And I would say exactly the same with usted. You don't need to use it, but you need to understand it. So you need a rudimentary understanding of it. Yeah, you don't need to spend all your time. Before it used to be people would only speak using usted when they were learning. Like yeah. they would learn usted and that yeah. was it. No, that's not good. They need to learn tú and vosotros. But you need a rudimentary understanding of, of usted. Yeah. And usted. I, I don't so, yeah. disagree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you guys are a couple. Yes. Mm -hmm. You started out as friends, obviously, like you mentioned yes. earlier, when, when you decided that you're moving in with Gordon. Um, and <laughs> you I decided. Well, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I made the decision. <laughs> <laughs> and what's it like podcasting with your partner? Because obviously you guys have spent hours and hours behind the camera, well, in front of the camera with the mics on. Have you ever had a podcast scheduled where you maybe didn't, feel like you wanted to go on because of maybe a prior disagreement oh, for or... sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and how is that have you ever cancelled any altogether um I, I, most of the time i mean i'd say again 99 percent of the time we just you know you know i think the secret is this is the secret that i don't see gordon that much so we don't have time to argue because he's upstairs here in his man cave <laughs> and i'm downstairs with the kids so we don't get the time to argue, really. <laughs> well, this is a real good thing. Yeah, it's true. So we don't spend that much time together because he's always working up here and I'm I'm downstairs. But yeah, we, we've had some moments that we've disagreed on something and I go, right, let's not record because we're not in the mood. And we like to record when we feel, you know, upbeat, that, upbeat and happy to record. But of so but yeah. really, really, really happens. Really yeah. happens. And obviously the, the beauty of editing you know, editing software. Yeah. I just put that up. I mean, what what we do, what we do a lot in our videos yeah. is, if something peculiar happens or whatever, we'll put it as an outtake. You know, but they're always the ones where we're laughing, where we can't stop laughing, or where we say yeah, something true. stupid. But I mean, really, I could count on one hand the amount of times that we've had a, a, a bad session. 
Yeah. Where we thought, oh, no. my goodness, this is not working out. You no, know? maybe if but... we've argued before and we were like, oh, no, it's not working. This is... <laughs> but no, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. No. Uh, no I mean, lo happen. lots of people say to us, wait a minute, because uh, we work from home, you know, and we work together. We're married and we have the b business together. And they say, well, could never do that. <laughs> could never do that with my wife. We'd kill each other. And it, it works out. It really works out. It's always worked out beautifully. Yeah. I feel really privileged that we can live together, be married and work together. And it's, it yeah. works out nicely. That's really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. So within your relationship, who do you think has benefited the most linguistically? Uh, at this moment, Gordon is benefiting the most because we live in Spain. Mm -hmm. But it used to be me when we lived in the UK. Right. Sure. Okay. Because even though, even though we have one week of each language, and this is a rule set by Gordon, Years and years 20 ago. 20 years ago. Because you know what happened, Lee, at the beginning, when we started to decide, right, well, what are we going to do? Because at the beginning, we would say the easier things in the other language and the harder things in our language. Sure. We would go, oh, I don't know how to say that. I'll just say that in Spanish or in English. Spanglish. Yes. And we were like, <laughs> no, we have to we have to make the effort, you know, and, and say, try and, and express yourself. So we started with 24 hours. And we started with half a day. Oh, half a day. Half, half a day. day. Oh, wow. That was as, as much as we could manage. And then we switched to, I think after a few months, we switched to 24 hours. Yeah. And honestly, Lee, at the end of the, well, 24 hours, we weren't talking for 24 hours, right, but at no, the end of, of the day, our brains were like, I can't take this anymore. I can't. My brain was like melting. I was like, I need to reach <laughs> off. Yeah. So it, it's like, it's like exercise, it really. Is, it's like yeah. exercise and you know, when you do exercise and you have to build up the muscle, mm -hmm. it's exactly the same. It's like, I can't, you, you get to the point and you think, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. But then you get used to it and it gets easier and easier and easier. And then when it was easy to do 20, the 24 hours, Gordon said, right, let's start a week. And really that was cool. years and years ago. And we still keep that. A week in Spanish, a week in English. And we're very, very aggressive about our week when it's, when it's, oh, yes. when it's Spanish week. I'm going, eh, eh, eh. Don't talk to me. This Don't is Spanish talk week. to me. This is Spanish English. week. This is Spanish week. But we've done it. And what we found is that it, it, we tried two weeks and it was too long. It was too long for us. One week seems to be just nice to keep, it keeps both of our languages going nicely. Yeah. Um, so it works out really nice. But obviously when I lived in England, even though it, we had the Spanish week, everything around me was in English. Everybody I talked to was English. Yeah. So I was still talking in English anyway. And yeah. now Gordon is in Spain. So we have the Spanish, the English week or the Spanish week. And he talks in Spanish with everybody else. So sure. obviously now he's, I'm jealous. So, now. <laughs> but however, however, if we're going to be, if we're going to be tickies mickeys, okay. okay, you had 12 years That's in true. England and I've only had 10 years in, uh, in Spain. <laughs> so you're still winning. I'm the winner then. But, I'm but, we're the not winner. Making a, but it's not a competition. It's not a competition. competition. <laughs> Nobody said it was a competition, but you're always... But I'm the winner. <laughs> <laughs> this is really interesting. So when you guys have lived in the opposite country to where you were born, how have you felt as foreigners in those opposite countries? To, to give an example, I mean, I remember becoming overtly proud of being British when I lived in Spain. I wasn't particularly a proud Brit living in Britain, but as soon as I moved to Spain, I, 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 I felt... Like I was almost representing, not, not, the, not, not the entire country. Of, yeah, walking around with the little <laughs> mini jack flag. But I, I don't know how to express it particularly well, but I felt like it was important to represent myself well due to the fact of being a Brit abroad, particularly with the rep reputation, Gordon, that we have as Brits abroad. You know, yeah. there's actually a, a huge cross to bear. And one of the things I really liked was the ability to either accept or reject the things that I liked, particularly about Spanish culture, or that I didn't particularly um, enjoy. Prime example of this being the way that people walk all the way across the path in their friendship groups or their family groups. And then when you approach them, they don't move. Um, that was... <laughs> It's that like a freaking like that. <laughs> exactly. I don't know whether that's maybe that's just a Madrileño thing. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just, <laughs> or an entire but so for me I was like let me know they never move that that was the, yeah. the the jokey comment I'd say in my head but being at home and having people behave 
in a way that I didn't find particular particularly pleasing. You know, I'd get like a visceral response from, oh, these idiots. But I'd never thought that about Spaniards. Oh, this is just what they do here. <laughs> so how about you guys? Is there anything that sort of you noticed as being particularly different, the sensations that you've had from living in uh, opposite countries to, to where you were born? Yes. Well, when I lived in England, because I lived in a really small village called Newton Aycliffe, near Darlington, um, almost everybody there knew everybody else. <laughs> so I was I was the Spanish girl mm -hmm. there. You were special. And, yeah. I, and I felt special. I was like, oh, I'm different. I'm special. Local celebrity. Not, yeah, like, well, not, not that much, but I was like, <laughs> you know, people knew me like Cynthia, the Spanish girl. I had my own name. Mm -hmm. Now here, I'm Gordon's wife. Because Gordon is the Gordon is the star, so I'm like <laughs> whoever she is, I don't care. Gordon's wife, Gordon, <laughs> Gordon the Brit. Yeah, so you went from being uh, Cynthia, so, the Spanish girl, to Gordon's wife. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was, you know, I, I felt like oh, everybody knows me, and I, also I was teaching Spanish, or I got to know lots of people, and they would see me in the streets, and they would go, "Hola, hola." <laughs> yeah. So I like that. I uh -huh. like that. Yeah. So you missed that then, obviously. So effectively, you've become anonymous, Cynthia. Yes, now I'm, I'm basically nobody. Just, a, just another <laughs> one. Una doña nadie, no? Now I'm just <laughs> born, so they recognize me. <laughs> yeah. On my own, they don't know who I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, I, st I, I stood apart every time we went out in the evening because I always felt overdressed. I seen too many too garments. Many layers. Yeah, yeah, too many layers on compared to the rest of the girls. I would oh, well. a scarf and a jacket or a coat and I was cold and I would look around and the girls were like in summer dresses in winter <laughs> or less oh my god yes and I got how can they do it and I so you could you could set me apart instantly that's in theater, <laughs> the distance and Gordon was cursing you having to pay for a cloakroom every time you went out <laughs> Absolutely. like these these British dolls don't cost a penny in cloakrooms but Cynthia Bly extra five quid every time <laughs> yeah. the scarf and the jacket and this. Yeah. so, so I think how it's, about you then Gordon I, I think it's um I mean it's fascinating going from from one culture to another and I, fortunately yeah. in my life I've had the the luck to be able to live in a, in a um, Muslim culture, to live in Mexican culture uh, and to live in Spanish culture and make that comparison with the UK. What, what, what I like, what I like about Spain is that that Spain is rapidly changing, but Spain is probably 30 or 30 years behind the UK in many of its traditional cultural values. And and so, it, you know, here in Spain, what's very important is a family. Very, very important. You know, and I mean, it's only recently that it's starting to change, whereas everybody would live in the same barrio. There were, you know, yeah. auntie in front, uh, cousins down the road or whatever. Um, Spanish families talk to one another constantly all through the day. They're constantly checking. You know, checking is that what you've been, what have you eaten, what are you doing today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you have, have, you, have you had lunch? <laughs> yeah, which is the other thing as well. So, family is very important, and also, um, and it isn't just food, but but the whole idea of of getting together and eating together and things is 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 absolutely the most important thing for them. You know, sitting down. Vamos a tomar algo, you know, a tomar algo is like the expression if you had a euro for every time that was said in Spain, you would be a trillionaire. So th there's a, some lovely values that I really like, uh, that I really like, that I saw disappear from the UK. Or, you know, or, or was it ever there? I don't know. You know, families have always, in the UK, people, they, they leave home and they go and live in another part of the country. It seems to be the standard thing to do in the UK. Mm. It isn't so much in Spain. So I, I really like that. Um, the one of the big culture shocks for me, uh, if you're going to talk on the negative side, is that in the UK on the roads, uh, people are polite. Yeah, you know that they, they, they let you you go. I mean, in fact, sometimes it gets ridiculous. No, come on, no, no, you first. No, no, you first. You first. Yeah, yeah. But here in Spain, no, no. Yeah. 
here in Spain, it's uh, get in if you can find a gap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? Don't get I'm not letting you on roundabouts. Oh my god. Oh, roundabouts. Oh. We nearly That's had we nearly had an accident. We nearly had two accidents lately on roundabouts. Yeah, roundabouts are just they're, they're very new here in Spain. People really <laughs> haven't got the concept yet. They haven't got the concept. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the driving is. And so what? What Cynthia and Cynthia when she came to the UK, that was what she used to say. You know, wow. You know, people people are very people kind were on so the road. So nice. People were so nice. Yeah. Really, that like driving, they would let you through, even if you know they had the right. Sure. They would say, you know, they were so nice. Uh, <laughs> driving and in, in everything. I, I love that. When any any time I had to do something over the phone, they would fix it and I would go, it's done. I can't I can't believe it's done. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe they put me, they haven't put me through 20 more people <laughs> to tell me they can't do it. And then they've just done it. I'm like, really? You've done it? Yeah. Can you check? Can you double check? It's all done. Yeah. So I love that about uh, the English culture. That's sure. funny. How polite and nice you are. Mm. Yeah. And the, the red tape that you've mentioned there of needing to, when you buy a car, you have to go to the place of the person to buy and then to sell. And then you have to go back to register it. And then you have to go to the, oh, I, 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 visit, I think I visited three different offices in the sale of one car and the purchase of another. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's never terrible. close by either. They're always the opposite oh. sides of the city. Yeah. Sure. True. <laughs> But, you know, in that, I mean, you know, there is what I've learned is there are some things that you can say, you can criticize Spain for certain things. And Spanish people would be absolutely de acuerdo contigo. That would be one. That would Bureaucracy be one. Bureaucracy yeah. would be one. You can say whatever. They'll say, I agree. Absolutely. I you agree can, with you. Yeah. You can <laughs> criticize uh, politics. No politics problem. Politics as well. Yeah. Just don't talk about the food. Don't Ooh. say anything about the food. Because if you do... You're in the biggest trouble you could ever be. Okay, but this has an explanation. <laughs> okay, before you say it, let me let me have a guess at what this explanation yeah. is. Is it because Spanish food is the best in the world? Well, mm, <laughs> I, I won't answer that. I'll let everybody else decide. I think so. <laughs> personally, no, yes. Personally, no. But we're very proud of our food, mm -hmm. whether it's the best or, or not. We're very proud of it. And Spain is a, a food culture. Um, you know, everything is based on food. Mm. If you go out, you also eat. You know, it, we know a lot about food. We know what the best wine is, the best cheese, the best whatever. So food is really important for us. In the UK, though, food is not the main priority in life. You know, so you go from a place of food is... Very food and family are at the top, and then you go to a place with food is not even in the top three or the top yeah. five. You know, yeah. it's more of a like a drink culture in the UK, and sure. um, so it's a shock that way. So when if you come to Spain and you talk badly about the food, which is one of our top things, you're gonna have people going, mm, you know. So I wouldn't yeah. recommend to criticize food in general. You can criticize the food in a restaurant or food, you know, things like that. Of course. But talk about food. Just find something that you like and talk about that yeah. food that you like. <laughs> That's Heaven my advice. You mention ham. Heaven forbid you criticize the ham. Never criticize ham. <laughs> oh, 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 never. I, I always say, I say to to our students, um, you've got to learn things like when they say "qué tal la comida," you've got to say "está riquísima," "está para chuparse los dedos." You've got to be effusive. You know, whereas in the UK, in the UK. Uh, they put your plate down and they say, eat it now. Don't wait for anybody else. Eat it while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. Yeah. Certainly in the Northeast. And then our comment is, yeah, that was nice. That, that was hot. Nice. That, was that, that was nice. <laughs> Not me. Yeah. That was nice. That just doesn't wash in Spain. And you don't no. sell your food. You know, you've got really nice food in the UK yeah. that people don't know. People just know fish and chips, which is nice. I love fish and chips. But you have really nice food, but you don't talk about it. You don't sell it and, you know... It's a shame. It's just not I part love, of our culture. You know, we don't no. we don't get excited about food. And it's a shame because you yeah. do have really nice dishes. Yeah. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we have a local restaurant called Ole Ole in Lincoln. And it's a, a family that originated from the Canary Islands. And right. the food is authentic. And nice. I take my students there. So sometimes I'll do an intensive day and we'll go for lunch. And the, the, the Amador Junior is the the boss now 
and he teaches the students expressions and he always says, riquísimo. You need to tell riquísimo. me it's riquísimo. <laughs> And uh, he gives these wonderful adjectives to describe the food. And he's absolutely mm -hmm. right. And it's the, it's the pride and the sentiment that comes from, from the food culture that you have in Spain. And, yeah. and it's to be valued without any shadow of a doubt. Absolutely. absolutely. So you mentioned your students and the things that you like to teach them. What would you say the teaching style within Lightspeed Spanish is? Hmm. Well, I'd say, to? well, first of all, I think we want to make it fun accessible so that people can understand things and it's not too grammatical, even though we, we explain grammar and everything, sure. but we try to make it so that people understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because when we started, many times we would go, why didn't anybody explain it to me this way? This is so much easier to, you know, or things to link with other things. And you go, that's so much easier than when you check a grammar book that is really right. dry. So when we started, we thought, right, let's make something that people can understand and um, let's not focus that much on the grammar terms even though I use them but let's not focus that much on that and let's focus on how to make it how to link it with something that they already know or how to link it with something in English and we try to make it like that and, and fun I'd say what else sure yeah about? yeah that principally what 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 we've always tried to do is just have fun while we do mm. it have a laugh so you know in our uh like when we started our free podcast, we would always start with a bit of a conversation and just have a bit of fun and a chat and how's your day been and stuff like that. And then in the examples, the examples of how to do sentences, the sentence was always crazy and <laughs> stupid sentences. The the way that what, I, what I've learned over, over the years is that information for information's sake doesn't even make a hit. No. But if you can, if you can make somebody laugh whilst they learn, it actually makes a hit. They remember much better. You know, it, what is stimulus? True. If you can create a stimulus while they're learning. And so for us, it's and it's been very easy because we like to have fun. We like to have a laugh. And to do, how long have we been doing this now? 15 years? 15 years, yeah. If it had been, if it had been boring, we wouldn't be doing it now. I mean, we right. couldn't keep 15 years up of just being boring grammar, grammar. So the more we go on, the more fun we try to have just to to keep it yeah. light and you know yeah. and that that's what most people are, i think are attracted to because you can go on the internet and you can find tons of free content tons and tons and tons so the people that are attracted to us i, I believe come because they find it fun to learn with us you know and i think that's yeah. the key yeah i always tell my students that the personability is why you keep coming back you know i will never yeah. claim to be the best spanish teacher in the world i'm not i know i'm not i know more than, I'm one step ahead, Gordon. I know one. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of my student. I'm joking. Sure. But but the personability, creating an environment in which people feel comfortable, people yeah. enjoy coming in, and it's not a chore for them. You know, and yeah. as yes. soon as you start to hit the grammar too hard, yeah. people will be telling you, "Oh, I can't make it this week, guys." Oh, and then you're gonna lose them. But you guys, yeah. I, and it's really interesting, and 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 I see it as a compliment when people have told me, and I keep repeating myself, that we align very closely. I heard your podcast and I thought that's a compliment. Like I'm, I'm pleased that people think that because I try to recreate the same sorts of environment as you've just spoken about. Sure. And my tagline for for Viva Spanish is Spanish in context, not from textbooks. Exactly. That's so that's pretty good. That's good. Minimal grammar, but it's necessary. They need to know yeah. why. But uh -huh. then, for example, if we're working on the the possessives, I'll say, okay, these are the these are the possessives. These are the bits that are the my, your, his, her, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now let's use it. Tell me that's your thing. Yes. Is it your thing? Ask me if it's my thing. Is that his? I don't know. Ask him. Exactly. Is it his? Yes, it is his. That's really and good. It's that agility and yeah. the movement around and and it, like you say, you keep it light and you keep yes. it fresh and you keep it entertaining and and it's a winner. So, what are the typical profiles like of your students if you have one? Oh, we do. We have a very very clear profile. We do. Yeah. Screen. Who is that? Yeah. So our students are what we would call mature students. <laughs> yes. So they tend to be, uh, if we were going to take, for example, we, we, I can look at YouTube stats, right? And the average age is between 50 and 65. They're okay. the people that we attract. Okay. Uh, 
if we look at our immersion courses, the average age is between 50 and 65 and, and more. I mean, we've had 87 yeah, we, year olds yeah. on, the, on the course. So why? Because we, we pondered that, you know, why? Why is it that we, you know, we don't attract young, young people? I think people, people of that age have got time. They've got the often retired. They've got money and they can invest in their learning, you know, so. I think what we we tend to we appeal to them because of our I think the length of our um, yes lessons and things like that maybe the format as well yeah that the we format have is more aimed for uh, more adult people yeah and right. younger people want you know something quicker like a something short vertical video. vertical <laughs> with music and with subtitles music. going like this yeah. dopamine hit. Yeah. <laughs> And we're not. We don't go for the dopamine hit. We go for the. We're going to have some fun and explain it to you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really interesting. Do you do? You, have you ever thought about looking to stretch your market, or do you feel comfortable and confident in the in what you're producing? Therefore, your market will be what your market will be. No, we, we've uh, everything that we've ever done in in Lightspeed Spanish really. Uh, Every book that we've written just about has come from a suggestion from one of our students. Mm. Where I've got yes. big ears when people <laughs> suggest stuff. I go, it sounds like a good idea. So somebody said to me, "Oh, you should be on Instagram and and TikTok and things like that." And before I'd never, I, I thought, well, I don't want to. So we started to, to move there, and we're starting to build up a, an audience. And obviously, that they they have Instagram is is more the thirty. 30, 40 year olds, isn't it? And TikTok's more the 20, 30 year olds. So it, those markets are growing as well. Um, but it's early days. But certainly, you know, every market that you got, for example, in our, our YouTube videos with our audience, we only have beautiful comments. I mean, rarely do we get bad comments. Yeah. Always very really positive nice. and thank you very much and everything. And we move to Instagram. Oh my God. I don't read them. I don't read them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're horrific. <laughs> Is that right? I can't. Yeah, not that. all. Of them. I haven't read them. Not, oh, no, you don't want to. <laughs> don't, don't. It sounds don't, like you shouldn't. Don't. It's just not worth it. There's some things that can't uh -huh. be forgotten. But, um, <laughs> however, but the, the, the not that's not everybody. Just it happens to be obviously that that platform. People are more sort of interactive and know oh, you're talking a load of rubbish and that's a load of crap. And what do you know, you English person <laughs> wow. who throws. Throws yourself off balconies and stuff like that. You know, that's that's that. Um, that's balconing, what the famous balconing, British yeah, yeah. Spanish. Yeah, balconing. <laughs> Dear me, um, TikTok. No, TikTok's not. Uh, the comments are few and far between, and and that's growing as well. But Instagram is really growing. I suppose it's it's funny, isn't it? If you because we, we do shorts and we talk about the culture differences and stuff like that. And some of them, are, it's not, they're not polemic, but I'm just kind of saying, hey, this happens in, the, in if, you cut, if you're a Spanish person, and you go to UK, don't do this. Just comparing the cultures. And if you're English it's coming to Spain, <laughs> it is polemic. In Spain, don't. <laughs> Spanish people shouldn't do this or English people shouldn't do this in Spain. So yeah. it's kind of like showing, just trying to show the cultures. But that, that for them is obviously polemic. You know, any English person talking about Spanish culture. But right, that, you've got a target on your back. Who are you? Yeah. yeah. What people, do you know? People take everything really seriously. I know. Sometimes. It's like, it's just, just, just not tanto, eh? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Talking about it's queuing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In Britain, you make an orderly queue of one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, it, that shocked me, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't have a particular presence on social medias and whatnot. And I do the podcast really because I enjoy talking about Spanish and I enjoy speaking to people that know about Spanish too and have been on their own journeys, which is like I said, why I got you guys on. Um so that does shock me that you you have some haters. Well they're not haters, they're no, just they're, they're just saying hate. don't talk about what you don't know about. That's basically right. what they're saying. You know, who are you? You don't know you're British, you don't know. You just throw yourself off bag bagonies and get drunk, you know, profiling. I guess that's the reputation yeah. that yeah. You have been well, unfortunately, it is. I mean, you mentioned it. You know, Brits abroad. You know, yeah. and the trouble is, Gordon. Somebody that looks like us always ends up getting gored at San Fermin as well. 
every yeah. year. There's someone true. that looks very much like you or I <laughs> with the lighter hair and the hair. Like, <laughs> with with a bottle of wine in one hand and uh, <laughs> or oh, Cali Mocho, um, even that is true. That uh, is true. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so if you were to build the perfect student as in Spanish learner, what characteristic would you give them? N name a few characteristics. Mm. Start, well, they would have to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, oh. They would have to know that they have to persevere. Sure. Um, they would have to know their why. Why am I doing this? Mm. That's important. Yes, because if not, you know, you think, well, I'll just leave it. But if you have a why, a motivation... Then you keep at it. Uh, I don't know. It could well, be moving up. You move into Spain, or you have a partner, or you have family, hmm. or you like the language. Really good wise. Sorry to talk over you, Cynthia. It's just uh, I've had some really good wise over the years of of why people do want to learn it. The, the best one for me was that um, a, a student's grandmother had moved from Spain to the UK and had spoken to this gentleman's father in Spanish. Dad understood but barely spoke. Mm. And he was worried that the language was going to die with oh, him, ultimately. Okay. So that was his reason for wanting to learn Spanish. And I thought, yeah. that's such a cool reason. I just, yeah. when you mentioned the why, I just wondered if you'd had any that stuck out to you guys from a student of why they wanted to pick the language up. Well, we've had people saying, my wife is Spanish and I can't understand when she talks. I yeah. want to know what, what she says when she curses at my me. Son is getting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my son's getting married to a Spanish uh, speaker. Yeah. Um, I'm buying a house in Spain. Um, I'm going to start a business in Spain. We've had, you know, every reason. You know, I, I, something that's really interesting, just talking about the qualities of a good student uh, or an ideal student and the why. So what I've found is that when I talk to the students, all of them had a definite why when they started. The ones who've remained, obviously, some mm. you know people just say, oh, I just fancy doing it. Yeah. But the people who've had a definite why, like a house in Spain, family, Spanish-speaking family. But then often they get to this point where they say, and this is why I started, but now I don't know why I'm continuing. I'm just obsessed. Mm. Yeah. I'm obsessed. Mm. And so to add to the, you know, the perfect quality is obsession. If you if you can get that obsession of I don't know why I'm doing this now, but I've got to do it. Yeah, that's what carries you through. That's what Cynthia had. That's what I had, and that's what I've seen in so many students. Like even I, I tell you, do you want a, a why? I've had a number of students that have said to me, with like a religious kind of background, I think I've been guided oh. to learn Spanish. I've had that, yeah. you know. That's true. I've been guided and I know that I'm going to use this Spanish to help people in the future. I've got one guy who's who's um, uh, an alternative healer. And he said, I just know. I, I don't know why I was learning, but I was guided to do it. And I mm -hmm. and I'm going to end up practicing in Spain, you know, so Amazing. whatever, you know, as long as yeah. you're obsessed, yeah. then I think it's yeah. going to work for you. That's yeah. really cool. Really, really cool. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? So you've got the obsession. You've got the, the 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 why. You've mentioned the optimism. The I think what one thing that that holds us all back is having re, unnecessarily high expectations of our own performance. We we are our worst uh, fans sometimes, <laughs> you know. Um, and people have such a downer on themselves. Uh, they make comparisons to compare themselves with somebody else. And, and we always say never compare yourself with anyone else. Only compare yourself with yourself from before. Yeah. Am I better than I was a year ago? You know, have I improved? But I think we, we get a down on ourselves. And I, so the ideal student would be one who didn't take things too seriously. That is a good point. Yeah, not taking things seriously, but also because that made me think of when you learn a language and you start to speak with other people, when you're outside the comfort zone of books and grammar, mm -hmm. when you then go and talk to people, it's 100% certain that you're going to say something that sounds hilarious. Yeah. And people are, gonna, are going to laugh. 
And you're going to be left thinking, what have I said? What have I said? People are laughing. And it's a fantastic way to learn things because you only make that mistake once. Once you know, you never make that mistake again. True. It's true. But I think we should, you know, just laugh as well. You know, think, oh, what an anecdote for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And some people take it. Well, I think all of us, we don't like to be laughed at, obviously. But if you think this is going to be part of their journey, at some point, I'm going to say something stupid or rude by accident. And people are going to laugh. Normally rude. So, normally. you know, normally rude. Yes, we've all done that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if we learn thinking, right, I'm going to make mistakes and that's fine. People are going to laugh and that's fine. And sure. That would, you know, help a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. It's so losing confident. that inhibition, isn't it? Losing yes. those inhibitions and, and just having the confidence to to make a mistake. I was with, it's funny because I, I told uh, I, my students that I was coming on the podcast with you and uh, I got a lot of messages back saying, oh, that's great. And I put out the opportunity to, to ask uh, questions to you through me. And actually, oh. she's going to be so pleased that I'm doing this. Oh, cool. I had a, had a class with uh, a student earlier called Kerry. And the, the okay. comment she said to me <laughs> was, I'll give you a bag of Haribos to name drop me. She said, oh. yes. And she said, yes, some of my students listen to your podcast and find it useful, such as my star student, Kerry, <laughs> or something along those lines. Oh, so uh, I, I feel like I'm owed a package of Haribos. <laughs> 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 but she she does listen to your podcast and she is a big fan so Kerry there you oh, go gracias, <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving forward in your opinion can anyone learn Spanish anyone can learn Spanish um, yes I, I'd say you can if, if you take into account what Gordon said about expectations of how long it's going to take and everything if you just do it at your own pace, because some people learn faster than other people, and some people have more means to learn than other people. Some people can spend more time. Some every people can week. spend more time. Yeah. Some people live in the country. Some people have family. Some people, and you maybe you don't. So if yeah. you take that into account, yeah, and you don't have a limit of I have to learn Spanish, you know, by the end of the year or in in three months, like some people say, or six months. I have to know these in six months. If you don't have those expectations, I think you can learn Spanish. But if you have these expectations, then I think it limits you and you may feel really frustrated. Sure. That's the, what I think. The biggest, the biggest block to learning is it comes from um, comes from our experiences before. If we've had bad experiences in school, yeah, and we've had you know we've had people telling us that we can't learn. And that, that happens a lot. You know, it's one of the biggest blocks to learning is we've had a bad experience in the past when we were children and it stays with us. And we don't believe that we can learn. When you don't believe that you can learn, you can't learn. Mm. Yeah. That's the issue. Mm. It's just Attitude a bit, everything. everybody's got the capacity. But if you've got this block of, you know, and you hear it all the time, oh, I'm not a good learner. I'm not a fast learner. Um, uh, you know, I can't, I, I can't understand grammar. And people talk them talk the game down tremendously yeah. so again if you want to learn a language and you've got some learning blocks you probably want to work on them too you know it isn't just about learning yeah. spanish it's learning how to learn yeah the you mindset know? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you have to have a growth mindset because yeah. without sure. it don't even bother because you're wasting your own time and you're wasting hours as well um, yeah so, sure. which it can be overcome of course it can be oh overcome. yes uh -huh. It's sure. just another aspect of that training that you mentioned, the like going to the gym, training your mind to yeah. see the opportunities rather than the obstacles. So, uh -huh. for, uh, yeah, uh -huh. for sure. So if a student were to sign up to your program, what would the first handful of lessons, for example, look like? Where do you prioritize the start of the Spanish language journey for an absolute beginner? Absolute mm. beginner, okay. Well, first and foremost, I'll tell them to... Focus on pronunciation. Um, learn how to pronounce properly, particularly the vowels, because mm -hmm. that's I think that's one of the the things that even if it, you could be intermediate, but some people have the English vowels or right. and that makes a lot. You know, if if you speak the language with a really good accent, it makes it look you speak like you speak better. Yeah, <laughs> grammatically. I completely understand. Yeah, yeah. So, so 
Well, um, sorry, uh, the vowels, the sound of the vowels, uh, well, the whole alphabet as well. Um, then I'd say add vocabulary. And that, yeah. Then... The, I think it's it, at the beginning, or what, what we've got, we set up this, um, all these podcasts of, yes. of, from absolute beginners, and we went through always starting with the alphabet. Yes, always. The sounds, uh, and then and then building up. I, I think it's important to build up to get a mix of handy sentences so that you can start using it, you know, learning how to order a beer, learning how to order in a restaurant, things like that. Order a beer, that's the yeah. first thing. Hey. It's important <laughs> for us Brits. First Before thing. the alphabet. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight away. That, that, Never mind that, yeah. how do you say it? Um, but at the same time <laughs> then, balancing, balancing that out with learning how to conjugate your verbs conjugation you know yes. understanding uh masculine and feminine mm -hmm. in, in spanish because that's ever so important because you know it's it's the fundamental basis of everything that you're going to say yes mm -hmm. so that's kind of um th the way it's like practice it you know let's have some tools as well because there's no fun just saying yeah i know how to conjugate tener right what are you going to do with that don't know yeah yeah, yeah? Yeah. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, you know. Whereas if you can then then have practical stuff, so that you can start to see people like to see a bit of a bit yeah. of feedback, you know. I, yeah. I I was able to ask for you know a, a bottle of coke or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting because exactly. speaking of specifically the verb tense, honestly, it, it, I can see completely why my students tell me that we align because my first lesson is this: how to pronounce well in Spanish. I go mm -hmm. through all of the sounds of each of the letters, and I say if you can nail this then you're already onto a winner. And it's yeah. an easy win, right? True. As a teacher, True. because they see progress. When they walked in the door from the first day, they didn't know what they're, what they're now leaving with. You know, True. so it's yeah. an easy win as a teacher, but it is so, so important. And then I'd say probably a handful of lessons in, I teach how to speak about ages. Now, okay. right, yeah. it's not a common conversation that you will have with mm -hmm. people. However, it's the verb tenere, which is a yes. fundamental and it's the numbers. Uh -huh. Oh, the so... numbers is a good one as well because in our classes, when we when I teach advanced students, mm -hmm. you know, when you get to the hundreds, a hundred and <laughs> you know, it's a bit dodgy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it gets a bit dodgy in that yeah. area. <laughs> yeah, especially five, seven, and nine hundred. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. the five hundred, seven hundred, nine hundred. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So it's but it's it's so interesting because, like I say, then I'll I tend to teach the AR verb conjugations as a mm. second lesson and I don't find over well then the ER the following lesson and I and I allow them and I set homework I don't know if you guys set homework but a little homework and it's always practical mm. find five regular AR verbs give me a sentence with each of them please try and use the different subject pronouns go ahead Fantastic. and they come back and they've had a little example of each of them and that way they get to use things that are of interest to them Two. So okay. if I say use, give me a sentence of each of the conjugations for escuchar, they're going to go, Ugh, well, what am I going to talk about? Five sentences about listening. Yeah. Okay, sure. So find me five, any regular AR verbs, take your pick and write me a sentence with each of them. And again, Very it's good. not that they hand anything in. They never hand anything in. And they, they always do that first session. Oh, I've done my homework. Here you go. I'm like, oh. <laughs> read it to me like you know you know how to do this so you read it to me and then as you very well know you can tweak any pronunciation bits and pieces True. Yeah, yeah very good that's yeah. cool so beyond there is what, what when do you consider bringing in the other tenses for example is is there a point in the journey where you think do you know what now we're going to introduce the future through this means or the past through this means Mm. Yeah. Well, before before that, I do adjectives and word order because yeah. it's different in English. Very important. Adjective, word order, how mm -hmm. the the place <laughs> for everything in the Spanish sentence, and then so, yeah, in moving term, up with, in terms of tenses. structure. Once once that once I can see we we can see that they've got the present tense fairly solid, mm -hmm. then. You know, there's only so much conversation you can do in present tense. You know, That's true. you know, it's it's very limited. We tend to speak about the future and the past. That's where we are most about conversations. And so, without that, it's kind of like they're a bit stilted. So, 
once they've got the present tense fairly okay, then we can take them to the present ir perfect. a, well, Or, or yeah, ir a, future as well, and then, present then perfect. suddenly you've got the, um, que vas a hacer mm. mañana, and you know, then you can, you've got a conversation, and I think the faster, I don't think, I, 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 I would never go too slowly with that, because the faster that you can have a five-minute conversation with them, their confidence just goes, mm. boom, you know, what are you going to do tomorrow, what, boy, ah, uh, Voy a comer yeah, con mi yeah. familia, but you, you know, and it's like, wow, I'm speaking Spanish. Then the next past, the, the next past tense that we go to is the the the, um, the present perfect. Present perfect. Does What have you done today? Completely What have you done same. today? What have you done this week? What have you done in your life? And and the, suddenly the conversation's wide open. You can talk about your entire life. You know, and so it's interesting because sorry to talk over you, God. That's okay. Um, it's interesting because. the the present perfect is massively overused in spanish too yes you know, it's, it's used for things every you know people will know that, that it ought to be the preterite or it ought to be the imperfect but they crack on with the present perfect anyway because why not you mix know? and yeah. match mix and match yeah. that's what they do yeah and and it's interesting because one of my students uses um an app called ella verbs i don't know if you're familiar with it i'm not familiar with I, it, no. i hadn't heard of it before and i haven't heard of it since but apparently while it's loading it pops up with facts about spain and spanish and the rest of it and it, it came up with 80 of the past spoken in spanish is the present perfect Mm. Oh wow! Okay, and, wow. It, and, and whether that, that might be fake news, you know, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they've got that statistic from. But Who a student knows? relayed that to me after I taught her, saying they use it loads in Spain more we than do. they probably should do, yeah. more, so much do. more than we would use it in in, in yes. the UK. Correct. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but it, but you know what's interesting about a Spanish conversation in the past, which was it used to used to blow my mind. I'd be listening to somebody. And they would be talking in present, present per perfect, preterite, imperfect, and but going into present quite often, you know. And I, and I, like I suppose we do, you know, in the UK. So I say blah blah blah, and he says, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But but the present perfect, yeah, it's not one that we slip into when we're in the far the far past in the UK. But here, yeah, yeah, we do use it a little bit more than you use it in in English. Yeah, but it's used yeah. in the same way mostly. Sure. However, there, I mean, there you are you can relate. With English, yes, English and Spanish, absolutely. with that tense. It's when we when we teach American uh, people from the US, they have a big problem with those tenses because mm, they're they not as it. common in the US, yeah. and yeah. so they they're kind of like, well, when when should you use it? Whereas yeah. people from the UK go, oh yeah, that tense, yeah, mm -hmm. I've eaten, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I speak a lot about investments of learning with my students. So I say the investment in learning this is the e as a hemos aves an. I said once you've got that. The rest is easy. You just like add or either on the end. You're fine, yeah. you know, barring irregular verbs, of course. I said, once sure. you've got the boy, bas, bar, et cetera, et cetera, you've got it. Stick at, and then you know the infinitives of the verbs. You, you're sure. golden. And they're like, yeah. is it that easy? I'm like, for now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for the for moment, now, yes. without pronouns, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and it's like I spoke easy, uh, earlier about an easy win, right? Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not to undervalue the language in any stretch, you know, by any stretch, it's all about giving them the tools to be able to cope and express in those other tenses that they didn't previously have with the addition of 12 words, mm -hmm. you know, with 12 extra words, yes. they can speak in the past and in the future. And it just, like you said, it fills them with so much confidence. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because I tend to use or tend to teach for the first time in the present perfect when somebody's done an important thing. For example, gone on holiday. I'm mm -hmm. like, right, today's the day we're doing the present perfect. And they're like, oh my gosh, that sounds scary. I'm like, it's not scary. It's really easy, but it's going to open a huge door. And I speak about it growing the potential of their Spanish. If they only know the present and then we go into the past, I said, it's doubling your speaking potential. Mm. absolutely you no know? and if yeah. you're going from the present into the future obviously depending on if they've already done the present perfect it's, it's either you know 50 more or doubling again into the future your speaking potential and they go please i thought it would be harder than that well yeah, yeah. again for now yeah for now I it's think. not and, yeah. yeah you know one of the favorite things that uh, i've heard over the years is is for somebody to say the more you know the more you know you don't know that's true yeah. And that's true. a danger because it messes with your head. 
It's you true. Know, you can do all of these things and then you open up the door to the subjunctive and you, oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't, sure, worry. yeah. don't worry because you know all of this. Don't forget you've not forgotten what you know. You just recognize now that this next bit is something you need to learn still. Yeah. But it's 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 such a, like, I agree with you, Gordon. It's such a beautiful language and, and there's so many expressions in Spanish, which brings me to the next point of this conversation. And that's, do you have any favorite Spanish expressions, dichos españoles, that you either use or you heard once and you thought, I do like that? Well, one is, it's not, it's not a un dicho, but something that we say a lot in Spain is, di que sí, di que sí, <laughs> which could be used in many situations. It could be, that's the attitude, you know, or it could be, yeah, you go and do it, you know, go on. Mm. Yeah. So we, we use that a lot. Oh, di que sí. Creo que esta tarde voy a ir a... Voy a ir de compras. Di que sí. Di no? que sí. No. Go on, treat yourself. Yeah, like, go on. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, a really oh, nice I look one. good today. Di que sí. Yeah, that's the attitude. So we, we use that a lot in Spain. So di que sí would be, okay. would be good for me. Yeah. That, re that reminds me of a tú sí que puedes. Tú sí que puedes. Of course you can. Go uh -huh. on, you can do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> How about you, Gordon? Is there anything that stands well, out? Well, there's another one that just come to mind because I, I, I've only got uh, rude expressions. Uh, you know, <laughs> all that. So far, we've been clean, Gordon. Let's we've been good way. up to now. <laughs> we've behaved ourselves. Then I don't have to tick the explicit box. <laughs> I can leave that unchecked. <laughs> no, it's when when somebody. Uh, what I like is when somebody uh, tells you that they've they're doing something like something positive, and you say, "Haces bien." Haces yeah? bien. Oh, yeah, bien. bien. I like that. It's like you're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, you bien. carry on with that. You yeah. keep yeah. going. Yeah. yeah, that's a really yeah. nice one. Because yeah. I initially I thought it was lo haces bien. And it, no, it's not. You don't put the low in. You just say, haces right. bien. Haces bien. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. really cool. And one of my favorites, like, tú no tienes abuela. <laughs> tú no tienes abuela. Sí. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's one of my ultimate favorites. And, and I've mentioned this on a previous podcast. If anyone hasn't heard it, it's the idea of um, somebody speaking highly of oneself. Yes. Because um, we're just being boastful. And, and the reason for that must be that they don't have a granny anymore. Yes, that's the them. granny's job. Yeah. Grandma used to be the one telling you how gorgeous you uh, are, how intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say that about yourself, you go, oh, you don't have a grandma. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Guys, yeah. I have absolutely loved having this chat with you. It's been my absolute pleasure to have you on. And I've had so much fun discussing Spanish with you and, and, and all of the things that we've talked around the language as well. And I hope you've enjoyed it too. Yes, we, we have. have. It's been Thank good you, fun. Lee. Yeah. It's been and good. I appreciate you taking the time because, you know, you're very busy people. Um, can you remind people one more time where they can find all of your bits and pieces? And uh, sure. then we'll despedirnos. Okay. So uh, our website is lightspeedspanish.co.uk. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and other places <laughs> but li literally if you put in into google, if you put into google don't put google into google you can break it <laughs> put into google <laughs> light speed spanish then you'll see everything everything that we've we've got we've, yeah. we've, we've been posting for 15 years the internet is filled with it well congratulations on all of the success that you're having guys um thank you it's, 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 you know it's, it's one of those things where I'm I'm looking up, right? I'm always looking up. I'm always looking for new ideas and, and ways of doing things. And, and the way that you guys are doing things, you're, you're smashing it. So congratulations yeah, yeah. and well Thank done. And, and well done for helping all of the hundreds, no doubt thousands of people over the years that you've you've been working with. So thank yeah. you ever so much for taking the taking the time, guys. Muchísimas gracias. Nada. Gracias and adios, Kerry. También, Kerry. <laughs> adios. Hasta luego. Adios, adios. 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 adios.